Welcome to the DFS Build NBA edition. I'm Kevin Roberts, joined with Taylor Smith. We are going to break down the DraftKings main slate for Wednesday, March 13th. This is a nice seven-game slate, um, and hopefully we can have some success. We got Luka Doncic and Nikola Jokic, <laughs> Nikola Jokic up top as uh, major spends, but that's really about it for this slate. Uh, so, so it should be fun. Uh, this video is sponsored by DFS Hero, uh, versatile lineup, optim op lineup optimizer that you can use to score a takedown. Right now, you can get 15% off when you use our link in the video description below. All right, Taylor, seven game slate. Let's try to run through this. We got Raptors and Pistons to start things off in Detroit. Pretty nice 232 and a half uh, game total. So, this one does look attractive. The only problem, it does feature the Pistons and Raptors. So, uh, that said, uh, RJ Barrett out, Chris Boucher out, Gary Trent and uh, Manuel quickly are questionable. So Toronto could be a pretty good source um, of value and usage here, assuming they don't uh, flip the script and get blown out when they should have gotten blown out by the Nuggets uh, in their last game. So how do you feel about Toronto and who are you going to prioritize in this slate? Yeah, I think we'll be getting to Toronto either way. Uh, shorthand, a good matchup, high total. The whole enchilada. Um, quickly looks good if he plays with no Barrett. Obviously no Barnes. It's just going to get all the usage. Um, Grady Dick, another outstanding uh, salary saver. Still pretty cheap. Guard forward eligible. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Trent, I'm into if he plays for 5-6. I think the minutes alone make him worthwhile there. Should also benefit with Barrett out. Uh, Bruce Brown looks like one of the better values on the slate, but he's also looking like he's going to be really popular as a result. Um, but 5-1, don't mind that at all. Certainly if Quickly is out or Trent is out or both, he's going to be close to probably a must after playing 38 the other night. So fine with that. Um, Olenek for 7K looks okay. Um, Jonte Porter is up to 4K after being 3K the other night. Probably not super into that anymore. He was a good punt with them shorthanded the other day, but at a higher salary and still center only, I don't think I can really justify John T. Porter. Yeah, I think I'm with you across the board here. The Raptors look really good. They look a lot better, though, if quickly and or Trent end up sitting. I think if both are in, I do like Trent at 5.6. I do still like Bruce a little bit at 5.1. I probably would be off of Dick uh, at 4.8K with all those bodies in. I really, really like Dick and Bruce Brown if Quickly and Trent are both out. Then they would be priority plays for me. They would look really, really good. Uh, Olenek is just fine. I think there's other guys like in that same price range I'd like a little bit more or just below him, and we'll talk about those guys in a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I kind of want Quickly, at least Quickly to be out. It doesn't really seem like he's going to uh, miss. So if Quickly and Trent are in, maybe I just stay away from the Raptors and hope this chalk busts. Um, but as things stand with those guys in doubt, Bruce and Dick uh, stand out the most for me. Um, on the other side are the Pistons, who obviously look pretty good here too. Cade Cunningham up top at 8.6K with a 27% boom rating. He's got the best boom rating at DFS Hero for the Pistons. Uh, and unsurprisingly, he's carrying a lot of ownership. I would start hesitating a little bit to just fire Kate into my lineups at, at 25 plus percent ownership, but he is a good play and the price is just right for who he's been lately. Um, so how do you feel about Cade and are you looking at Duran or any of these other Pistons guys and how do you, are you feeling really comfortable? <laughs> no, never. I mean, it's an awful team, but it is a good spot. They have a high total. 118 is quite high by their standards. Um, Cade and Duran look good, of course. I'm getting a ton of Isaiah Stewart right now for 5K. He hasn't had a 20% usage rate in a game since January 22nd, I looked up. Feels great. He just never shoots, but the minutes are there and he's cheap, so I will almost surely be playing him. Unless more value emerges, I'm going to give it a go tonight. The matchup against Toronto is really good for bigs, too, so here's hoping he can finally do something. Um, Fontecchio looks like he's going to be chalky. Marcus Sasser looks chalky. That doesn't feel great, but Thompson being out does open up minutes for them both. Sasser for 3-3 is fine, but that's just a lot of ownership on a guy that does not have a path to a ton of minutes still. Uh, Fontecchio at a higher salary looks like a bit of a chase, but I get it. Minutes are there uh, without Thompson, so it's okay. Uh, Stewart's the one I'm getting to most now, uh, most now though, uh, and it feels quite awful. Well, I will note that uh, Fontecchio is half of the ownership of Stewart at the moment. So 
and they're basically the same price. So I like that. I think I'd lean Fontecchio over Stewart. I do think Stewart is a good minutes play. I mean, you're right about that. The minutes are very, very good. The matchup is good. So, I mean, he's an NBA player. If he's going to be out there for 35 minutes in a good spot, he could luck his way into a very good game. So I don't think I he's would a- be quite shocked if he's actually half his own. There's no way that actually happens. Well, that's just how it looks right now. Obviously, things need to be updated and things are going to change too. If that stands though, if Fontecchio, who projects better, is only $100 more, if he's actually half the ownership ownership of Stewart, sign me up for Fontecchio. Uh, but the best play for the Pistons, in my opinion, is Duran. Uh, his projection doesn't wow you here, but he's a good price. Smash spot, um, 26% boom rating, second best boom rating for Detroit. So I really like him and his price here. Um, but you could convince me to play any Pistons guy uh, tonight. That All these guys have uh, you know arguments for them for sure. All right, on to the Nets and Magic. This feels like a game to avoid. The Nets are seven-point road dogs. I'm a little surprised the line isn't a little bit longer, but it's it worth noting that they are at full strength uh, outside of Ben Simmons being out for the year. Everybody else is back. Um, so that kind of dilutes them quite a bit, which even when those guys were out, I don't. I mean, who was standing out? Dennis Schroeder? Mikel Bridges never took advantage of the extra usage. So, um, And Cam Thomas is back, so I don't know what to make of that other than I don't like it. And then you go on the road against a defensive-minded and slow Orlando team. It looks bad. And by the way, 204 and a half total. So how are you feeling about the Nets? <laughs> um, I think the spread's not as wide just because the Magic can't score. They've been held under 100 points in two games in a row and just aren't a very good offensive team. So hard Fair. to trust them to blow anybody out. Um, I am getting to quite a bit of bridges. Uh, 6,900's a little cheap on him. Not a bad value guard forward just because he's the usage leader for this team. He and Cam Thomas. Um, yeah, that's really it. I'm not getting much else from the Nets. Yeah, yeah, Bridges. That feels good uh, after being horrible and then busting out for 45 fantasy points in his last game. Really doesn't seem like this would be the spot for him to continue that. Also, the return of Cam Thomas, who has smashed in his last two games. He kind of siphons Bridges' upside just a little bit here. But obviously, Schroeder's still there. With Ben Simmons out, that kind of solidifies Schroeder's role still. Shooter's still a pretty good price. All these guys are playable because they're all sub 7K and they all have roles. We'll note Cam Johnson's also back. But just if they're at full strength, they're on the road against the Magic. I don't like any of it. I don't want any of the Nets tonight. Um, they don't really project very well either. I, I guess they're not very expensive and they won't be owned. So if you land on them, there's that. On the other side, the Magic do have a better matchup, but this game environment doesn't look good. Uh, ben Carroll comes in with the best projection by quite a bit with 42 uh, point, uh, 42 fantasy points here for the Magic, and the next guy is Franz Wagner with 32. So as you said, their offense isn't the best. Uh, this is not a bad spot for them at all, but um, they don't look good across the board. I would probably just look at maybe Franz, but that's it. How about you? The one I'm getting to the most is actually Mo Wagner uh, for 3-9 power forward center but I'm only getting like 3% of him in about 4,800 lineups. So Gross. not exactly a conviction play. I will probably not be playing him or, or anyone else on this team. Worth noting, they do tend to like using their big men, though. So if it's not Wendell Carter, it is Mo Wagner. So I don't think it's the worst punt play on this slate that is kind of short of reliable value. I mean, by the way, let's not forget Jonathan Isaac at 3.5K. He is going to push for 20 minutes off the bench. The Nets aren't a good defensive team. I mean, there's worse punts to be had. I don't really want him. He's actually carrying ownership at 12%, but he's worth noting if we don't get other value tonight. All right, Bulls and Pacers, this is a good DFS, DFS, DFS environment. If I could talk today, that'd be awesome. Uh, the Bulls are visiting the Pacers in Indiana. Nice four-point spread, so surely they won't get their asses kicked like they did against the Mavs in the last game, right? Uh, pretty nice 229 total. This is the second-best well, no, uh, third best game environment of the slate. Uh, but that is actually saying quite a bit because a lot of shitty games tonight. Uh, but the Bulls look pretty good here. I mean, the Pacers are a good matchup. You have Vooch, DeMar, Kobe up top, even Dasunmu and Caruso. I mean, tell me why you wouldn't want to play Chicago on this slate. Yeah, I'll be getting up to them plenty, I think. Uh, Vooch being the priority for three in a still allowing a ton of points in the paint every night. That's kind of where he operates, so I'm fine to get to him. Uh, DeRozan leads the league in minutes per game. I think Kobe White is also top 10, so pure minutes plays in the 8K range. I'm fine with both of them. 
probably not together, but individual tournament plays, all three of them look really good. Less inclined to get to Desunmu or Caruso here. I think Caruso is fine if he's going to be, you know, lower owned than someone like Fontecchio in the same price range. I don't mind pivoting that to Caruso. Minutes have been up a little bit of late and good pace for them. Indiana also on a back-to-back, so hopefully Chicago can actually keep it somewhat competitive. Yeah, Vooch did smash with 52 fancy points the last time he played the Pacers, and the math checks out on that one because they do not defend down low very well at all. Uh, so I think Vooch is the play here for me. He does lead the way with the best boom rating for the Bulls at 20%. Um, he and DeMar are carrying a little, little bit of ownership, but they project the best, and they would be the two guys to look at, and probably that's it for me for the Bulls. It's okay if you land on Kobe or Desunmu or Caruso. I just don't like them uh, enough to really prioritize them. On the other side are the Pacers. This is a good matchup for the big men just because the Bulls don't rebound very well. I think they're like 17th in rebound percentage. And uh, Tyrese Halliburton, I think he's kind of smashed in this spot. Let's see here. He has averaged 57 fantasy points per game across two meetings, so it's been a pretty good spot for him for sure. Um, Siakam and Miles Turner look too cheap. With Mathurin out, Aaron Neesmith stands out. And do you have any other notes for Indiana? Uh, Turner and Siakam getting to around 20% apiece. Both look great, just like they did last night. Um, I'm also getting to plenty of Jalen Smith, another cheap power forward center in the same vein as Mo Wagner. I feel better about Smith. I'm getting more Smith. He's a good per-minute guy. Some uh, decent roll off the bench, so that's okay. Halliburton I would like to be on when he goes off, inevitably. I'm sure it's going to happen again at some point, but I'm kind of tired of chasing it now, and a pace-down spot against the Bulls is not really one that I'm inclined to chase. Perhaps, but he has seen his minutes rise to 36 and 37 over the last several games, and in his last four games, he has three games of 47-plus fantasy points, so he is getting into a bit of a rhythm here. So this could be a good opportunity to buy low on Halliburton in a sense because he's not even coming in at 7% owned. Obviously on a slate with Luka and Jokic, don't really think that's going to change. So I do think he's a pretty good play up top as a possible elite spend. Uh, but you're right, he hasn't really been that dude. As far as Siakam and Turner, I like them both. I think I'd lean towards Turner just because he's less owned, uh, their projection is comparable, and he's 1K cheaper. Um, and by the way, good call on Jalen Smith. If you're looking at the, the these guys, these value guys in this range right now, Jalen Smith, Mo Wagner, uh, Jonathan Isaac, Jalen's the guy there out of that trio so far. I agree with that. All right, Nuggets in Miami. Not a good spot for Jokic at all, but you know what that means. Jokic won't be owned. At least that's not what it's looking like right now. He does come in with the second best projection at 59 fantasy points, decent 21% boom rating, and just 2.4% ownership. That isn't going to stick exactly, but sub 10% does make sense. Not a good spot against Bam Bam. So are you paying up and prioritize Jokic, and are you looking at any other Denver guys tonight? Not really. Obviously, the ownership is appealing alone because they have ceilings. We saw the other night Jokic and Murray both can go off at the same time. But a spot against Miami on the road is not really the most likely outcome for that kind of ceiling performance. So... Jokic and Murray, fine individual if you're playing like a 150 set or something like that. Maybe 5 to 10. 10 might be even on the high side for that. So probably 5%, I would say. Um, MPJ for 6.4 is also kind of reasonably priced. So maybe a dart throw there. But overall, this looks like one of the worst games on the slate, which is saying a lot because there are a lot of bad games. Yeah, well, have we learned our lesson? <laughs> I mean... I'm not, I'm not really feeling like Jokic is like the guy to play on the slate. The only reason why I'm, you know, hesitant to write him off is because, well, he's Jokic um, and because he's completely unowned on this slate. So that is very interesting. I will, if I'm entering a lot of lineups, I'd be overweight for sure. Uh, but if I'm doing single entry, I don't think I'm going to get there. All right. We got Hornets and Grizzlies for a top contender for. Hold on. You just totally skipped Miami. Oh, yeah, I did skip Miami. My bad. Okay. Uh, let's, let's. I don't think we'll have to spend a lot of time, but. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, Bam Bam leads the way with a 41 point projection. None of these guys are going to be owned either. Uh, Tyler Hero remains out. I think, Ke yeah, Kevin Love is also out. I'm assuming you don't really love anybody here, but Bam and Jimmy do project decently. So, how are you feeling about Miami? Yeah, I think Martin is another Fontecchio pivot option that shouldn't be very owned at all. Uh, tough spot, but he's cheap. Minutes are there with Hero out starting and stuff, so I think that's okay. 
Uh, Butler for 8.6, just a dusting of him too. Maybe he's coming in around 10% ownership, which is okay, but not worth prioritizing. Rozier and Bam kind of priced up now. So, yeah, not a whole lot here. Yeah, I don't typically love playing centers against Jokic or against Bam, so I'm just probably going to ignore this game. I will note the Caleb Martin value, not too bad. Haquez even could stand out a little bit at 5.2K. He will be even less owned than Caleb Martin. Are we thinking about Nikola Jovic at all or just going to ignore them? He could get a spot start. I will fade him. All right, moving on. Now that we didn't fully skip to Miami Heat, even though we didn't need to talk about them at all, it seems. Uh, the Hornets and Grizz, top contender for worst game of the night. And it doesn't look good. Uh, the Hornets are now a slower-paced team with LaMelo Ball out seemingly forever. And the Grizzlies, well, they're both just bad. Let's just say that, okay? Uh, let's check at the uh, let's just check the injury news real quick. Where, the, where are the Hornets in here? Okay, so the Hornets, uh, Trey Mann is questionable. Obviously, him being out uh, opens up some usage a little bit, probably solidifies Michik. Um, but, yeah, nothing really stands out for me because Michik's price has come up. Maybe Nick Richards and Grant Williams, but that feels disgusting. What are you thinking? Yeah, I think Mann is okay if he's in. 6K. Not going to be owned at all. Um, assuming the minutes are okay for him, I don't mind that. Uh, Michich, I guess, would look better if he's out again, just because they have no other guards. Um, Miller and Bridges kind of pay up to be contrarian plays are okay, but Memphis hasn't really been that bad, even with all their injuries defensively, so I'm not looking to prioritize the Hornets too much. No, it's a slow defensive game, most likely. Um, so I don't, I can't really see why I'd want to pay almost 9k for Miles Bridges in this spot. So cue the 50 burger for Miles Bridges for sure. Now that I said that, but it just doesn't, it just is not a good spot to pay that much for somebody. Um, I think Michik, if Trey Man is out, would probably be the only guy I'd really feel good about going towards, but his price has come up enough that I'm not like racing to go get him if that's the case, even on the other side are the Grizz. Lots to monitor here. Desmond Bain on the injury report is doubtful, which as you alluded to earlier, definitely means he's playing and he's going to play 40 minutes. Uh, but really, um, still worth noting because if he comes back and even plays 20 minutes, that's eating into some of these values that suddenly wouldn't look that good. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Vince Williams, I think they're both doubtful. Yeah, they are. Uh, Santi Aldama was added to the injury report. He is questionable. Lamar Stevens, questionable. Scotty Pippen Jr., questionable. And they remain without Zaire Williams. So decent value here with Memphis. They do kind of spread everything out with their guys, and they added they added that one body, and they have LaRavia and Conchari's back. So not really anyone stands out as far as the guards for me. I think any of them are, are you know viable. For me, it would be the big men. If JJJ and Aldama are out, Trey Jemison would look really, really good at 4.3K. Um, yeah, so what are you thinking for the Grizz? Even with Aldama in, I'm still getting 80% Jameson. So I guess that's kind of the way it goes, just because they have no bodies left. Uh, I'll get to him either way, it looks like. Great matchup, too, of course, against the Hornets for bigs. Um, GG would look better if Aldama's out. 5'9", still not necessarily expensive enough. I assume I'd get to more LaRavia with Stevens and or Aldama out. Um, I guess uh, we can go back to the Brandon or Jordan Goodwin uh bandwagon if scotty pippen's out again Kennard is kind of okay the way at five two but i'm a little concerned about the minutes for him on a back-to-back just because he's quite injury prone so a lot of moving parts and i guess we'll just have to wait yep i agree i think i, I agree jemison's somebody you can probably pencil in for now and then figure out the rest later all right Cavs and pels in new orleans this game has a 216 total and a six point spread with the pels favored uh, Spida could be back. We don't know that news yet, I don't think. Uh, Evan Mobley, Max Drews, Dean Wade all remain out, so that does open up some usage here and some value if we have a stomach for it. Personally, if Spida is in, I kind of don't want anything to do with this team. If he's out, I do see some guys I like. How are you feeling? Yeah, Garland at 7-7 would be the one, I assume, um, just because it's the obvious role for him with Mobley and Mitchell out, but Otherwise, not really a lot. They're all priced up now. Um, it's pretty nasty. It's not a good spot, not a good game. I think yeah. LeBron at 7-1 is playable. I think he's okay if uh, if he starts and Spida's out. I don't I don't mind that. Obviously, yeah. if Spida's in, I would Maybe a Koro. <laughs> yeah, his price is coming up a little bit. Niang is still there. Um, I guess Merrill is a 
viable value. I don't, wouldn't feel good, very good about it. Uh, but yeah, it all depends on Spida. If he's in, uh, I'm off of this team completely. If he's out, I think it starts with Garland. Jared Allen is totally fine. Good projection. Uh, and Levert looks pretty good too. All right, the Pels are at full strength. Uh, a little bit of wonky minutes lately. JV's been getting his minutes uh, shaken up. Larry Nance has been getting minutes over him. Uh, so how do you feel about Larry Nance as a value tonight, and how do you feel about the Pels overall? He's okay just because he's cheap, but he's center only and just garnering some ownership, so it's not the most comfortable or intriguing play, but I get it. Um, he's okay. Zion's the one I like the most at 8-3. He looks like kind of a priority on this slate, even against Cleveland. His price never seems to really budge, so I'm cool with that. I don't mind some shots on Valanciunas. He's all the way down to 5-4, and uh, with Allen on the other side, perhaps they feel like they can't get away with Nance quite as much as they have against smaller teams. So I think Valanciunas isn't a bad uh, kind of dart throw, but yeah, not too much else looks really good. I guess Ingram has a pivot from Zion if Zion's going to be uh, chalkier. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I really don't have anything else to add. Zion was one of my favorite plays before even like, way earlier in the day before we uh, got any news or anything. Um, yeah, he'd probably be the only guy I'm really going to prioritize here. And his ownership has come up a little bit, which I don't really like. He was initially was at like 3%. So not a huge fan that the ownership is ticking up, but he is a good play. All right, last game of the night, Warriors and Mavs. Obviously, we got Luka here and no Steph Curry. So there's that. Uh, CP3. Uh, actually played 33 minutes last game, had 44 fancy points. He's been pretty good in both of his uh, spot starts after Curry's you know, been injured. Um, so he actually feels pretty good at 6.9K. Kamega looks fine. Dre looks fine. Clay's starting, but i eh, not so sure about that. And then you obviously have um, Jackson Davis, who came off the bench last game and still smashed. So for me, it'd probably be CP3 and not much else. Uh, maybe talk me into some other Warriors if you're if you're liking them tonight. Yeah, I was getting to a lot of Thompson and Wiggins, both starting and playing 30 minutes in the last game. If they do that again, I think they're good values, especially Wiggins at 5-1. I don't mind taking shots on that in a good matchup. Um, Kaminga is still 7K, should still lead the team in usage. Don't hate that either. Pajemski uh, came off the bench, but still played quite well. The minutes should be pretty safe either way. I think if Thompson's going to be chalky, then Pajemski as a pivot looks pretty good in the tournament. Yeah, Wiggins' price is nice if he starts. I just don't really like his ceiling uh, lately. And even when he's starting, he wasn't like getting like max minutes out there or anything. <clears throat> so um, he's definitely risky. I mean, when is Wiggins not risky? By the way, chalk Wiggins is even worse. But um, we'll see where his ownership lands and if he even starts again. Obviously, if Trace Jackson Davis you know, takes his place again, ends up starting, he would look very, very good at 4.9K. I think he's okay off the bench if we feel good about him getting the minutes, but I don't necessarily, so I probably wouldn't do that. Um, I'm okay with Wiggins, but CP3 is probably the standout for me for the Dubs. All right, last team here, the Mavs. Luka leads the way. As usual, it's Luka or bust. The real question is, well, I, well, I shouldn't say that. Gafford at 5K is not the worst value. He's, like I told you before, he's shot, he's made his last 28 consecutive shots. In the last four games. So I think the price and his per dollar ability uh, or per minute ability is good, but then all their bigs are healthy and that's not going to, he's, that's not sustainable. So I don't know if I trust it, Daniel Gafford. And for me, it's just Luca or bust. And the question is, do we pay for Luca on this slate? Yeah, I do think Irving's playable. Eight, six is a little light on him. Obviously he's been down a little bit with, Doncic doing everything, but you know, this Luca run presumably will end at some point. And Kyrie has still shown he can put up some numbers, even with Luca putting up numbers of his own. So I don't mind Kyrie kind of, you know, in lineups you're not playing Luca, certainly not playing him together if you're chasing a ceiling out of both. Um maybe Hardaway at four one is okay. Gafford for five K is okay, but center obviously has a lot of uh opportunity costs. So not my favorite thing. Luca is certainly a priority. Great matchup. Um, happy to ride the wave with him as much as I can, even at 12 8. Yeah, I agree. It will end at some point. I will note, though, that Kyrie Irving hasn't even hit his current projection <clears throat> since uh, February or March 3rd. So, the last four games, he has fallen below that. He just has not been, um, he just not has been a, a, an elite producer for some time. Last 50 point fantasy outing was February 14th. 
So, I mean, he's deferring big time. He's letting Luca go, go chase that MVP or lead the way or whatever they're doing. He's letting it happen and he doesn't care. And Luca is thriving. So I would probably lean on more riding the wave as opposed to playing Kyrie, especially Kyrie's actually garnering some ownership, which is a little bit unsettling if I'm going to, if I was going to consider playing him. Uh, but yeah, it's just Luca or bust for me. Um, before we wrap up here real quick, let's look at the boom ratings here. Luca, unsurprisingly comes in with the best boom rating. Uh, some Pistons are right behind him, and then also Raptors and Pacers. That should not shock anybody. As far as uh, high boom ratings that you see on the board there at DFS Hero, who are some guys or one guy that you are confident in building around in single entries or going to be very, very overweight on in uh, if you're max entering? Uh, likely quickly, assuming he's in. He looks like probably the best play on the slate to me. Okay. As far as this goes, I think Dern would be my call there. I think it's a really good price, really good matchup. Uh, I think he's going to smash, so I, I want a lot of him. And if I'm doing single entry, I'm probably going to have him locked in, uh, locked in there. As far as ownership and fade calls go, Bruce Brown is the chalkiest play on the board right now. Um, that could be an interesting one if quickly and Trent are in. Suddenly, I think you kind of suggested that possibility that Bruce Brown maybe would be a guy you'd want to shy away from. Uh, is there anybody on here that's really owned that you don't actually have any interest in or that you're going to outright fade? Uh, Sasser would be the one I'd be most inclined to get under on just because he's a punt with a, basically a sub 20 minute ceiling. So that's the one that should be pretty easy to deviate from. Yeah, I think that's an easy call. Second one would be Isaiah Stewart. You've kind of uh, let your fear be known about Isaiah Stewart. The minutes are there, the matchup is good, the price is good, but he's still Isaiah Stewart. But I'll probably be playing him. Well, Godspeed, my friend. All right, before we go, we did get some questions on Reddit, so I actually answered a couple, but let's get your insight too. Uh, one uh, Redditor asked, he has a three verse three, DeRozan, Ivy, uh, Jackson Davis, or CP3, Duran, Bruce Brown? The second one sounds way better to me. Yep, that's what I suggested too. I said that one probably has the safer floor because uh, we just don't know what to expect with TJD. So. Um, and also that's kind of assuming quickly and or Trent are out. That would solidify Brown a little bit better. All right, let's see what else here. Uh, we got a couple, a couple other questions, I believe. Okay, what do you think of Gafford as a cheap center option? Not my favorite thing to do. I think uh, Valanchunas might be a guy I'd be more into for 400 more. He's okay, but I don't think Gafford has a very high ceiling either. Right, agreed. Same sentiments. All right, last one here. How, what, are you, what are your thoughts on Darius Garland specifically and Jonathan Isaac? We did kind of touch on these, but just in case they're watching, we'll answer. Garland, them. if Mitchell's out, looks really good at 7-7. Seven, seven. Not sure how, how owned he'll be, so I'm fine with that. But Jonathan Isaac, I have zero interest in playing. Okay, same guy had a 2v2. Those two guys or Siakam and Jalen Smith? What two guys? Garland and Isaac or Siakam and Jalen Smith? I don't love playing Siakam and Jalen Smith together because I think they might be kind of negative, negatively correlated, but that's the side that I think sounds better because it does not have Jonathan Isaac in it. <laughs> yeah, I noted as well that uh, Jalen Smith has a better projection. I, when I answered, though, I didn't even think of the fact that they're both on the Pacers. Like, it just didn't register. Uh, but, yeah, that's a really good point. All right, that is going to do it for us. We really appreciate everybody who's viewing. If we help you out in any way, please give this video a like. And also – please consider subscribing to our channel, The DFS Build. It helps us out a lot and also alerts you for future videos just like this. Thanks for watching and good luck tonight.